it, it was interesting because I was going to school in, at Georgetown. I was in Washington, D.C. And at first I thought, how could you possibly be gay and work for the federal government? Little did I know that everybody working on Capitol Hill was gay or lesbian. I, I went to work for uh, what then was not considered so small a firm, uh, 25 lawyers or so uh, in Midtown uh, doing litigation, corporate and commercial litigation, a little matrimonial. Uh, I later learned that everyone in the firm had made me as being gay. Wish they had told me it might have made my life a little easier. I didn't uh, really come out in the sense that a lot of people talk about it. Uh, I always knew I was lesbian growing up and I was very fortunate. I mean, I was just very fortunate to um, go to uh, Friend Select where uh, I had my first uh, girlfriend and we went to prom together with a gay man in my class, which was pretty unusual for 1966. So I decided to go to law school and I was in Florida. So I applied to the law schools in Florida. I ended up going to Stetson University College of Law, which was by the gay beach. And that was my main factor in determining where I should go to law school is because it was near the gay beach. Well, socially, I discovered that there was such a thing as a gay bar. And, and gay bars were the first singles bar. The purpose is you go there, you have a drink, or more than one, and you meet somebody and you go home with them. Uh, and since I was pretty nice looking and I had a job, I was relatively speaking a catch at the gay bars, so I did pretty well there. Mostly, I realized I became a paid ruminator. I'm paid to ruminate on the law. And, and that to me was the most, that was the biggest epiphany that, oh my gosh, people are gonna pay me to study something I love. It would be like a musician or an artist being subsidized to do what he or she is passionate about. One Saturday evening, he takes me, we're both in coat and tie, and he takes me to 8709, the bathhouse, the line is down the stairs and around the corner as it always was on a Saturday night. And we go into the bathhouse and we're walking around. It's dark, you know, as, as these things are. And he's just walking around, pulling me around. Guys are lying on the floor. He shake them in the middle of whatever they were doing. Hey, hey, I want you to meet Steve Lax. He's running for municipal court in June. You've got to vote for him. Go on to the next guys. And, and I'm looking around. He had big vote for Steve Lax signs all over the bathhouse. It was a different experience than, say, most people running for office. So at that point in time, I decided I really have to make up my mind. Do I really want to do real estate law? And the answer was no. I wanted to do employment law. I wanted to do discrimination law. So I changed my focus at uh, Stetson. I ended up writing several papers about discrimination against homosexuals in the federal government. And it became somewhat obvious that I was determined to change laws. I came to New York and I decided to take a job that um, offered me the most money. I had no idea what it would be and I ended up working for Citibank. That was my first experience being in the closet. I went whoosh, back in, closed the door, didn't have any um, any indicators um, that I was a lesbian and I uh, lived with that from 1969 is when I came to New York to 1974 when I left the bank to go to law school and um, when I left the bank I decided I would never be in the closet again. The first project I got involved with there was to uh, get the American Bar Association to go on record against laws that criminalize consenting sexual activity between adults and after working on that project and 
eventually bring it to fruition, I came up with the idea for Lambda Legal. I had many lawyers at my retirement party come up to me and say, and these were young lawyers, come up to me and say, thank me for being so out and being so positive because it made their transition to being out easier. Um, and it was encouraging to them. They told me they felt that if, they, if, if I could do it, they could do it. And they saw that I wasn't paying a huge price for this. And so it lessened their fear of what price they were gonna pay, so to speak, for coming out. A lot of people wrote thanking me for inspiring them and letting them know that they could have a future. I'm gay and I know that if you can do it, I can do it. You know, again, I come from um, a wonderful state. I, I come to this conference, I try my darndest not to gloat because I love being a judge in Massachusetts. I love being an LGBT lawyer in Massachusetts. I mean, hello, we are the home of same-sex marriage. Now it's considered automatic that uh, gay people have a place at the table for consideration for any judgeship in the state. I'm a Philadelphian at heart, okay? So like Rocky, I would like to be thought of as a courageous leader who um, was willing to take on risks as someone who was not afraid to use um, her strengths and skills to climb the steps of the art museum and to make a difference. I'd like to be remembered as someone who had an impact on society for our community. I'd like to be remembered as a judge who was fair and open-minded and willing to encourage other people to enter the practice of law and strive to be a, a judge. In 2000, uh, Newsweek did a cover story called Gay Today and they had a bunch of people on the cover. I didn't make the cover, but I did make it inside the magazine. Uh, There's a full-length uh, photograph of me in robes, and they quoted me for at least a sentence and a half or two sentences. And uh, a couple weeks afterwards, I was uh, working arraignments, and I had a defendant who was not happy with what I did. And as he was leaving the courtroom, he yelled, cocksucker! And I turned to the courtroom clerk who was sitting next to me. I said, maybe he saw my picture in Newsweek. And so I hope, if, if people remember me at all, I hope they think of me as a person who gave, who gave to the community, who gave to the court, and gave to the people that appeared in front of me. If you, if you give, then you, your life, I think, is worthwhile. Well, I also would like to think that um, I was, they're going to remember me as a pioneer. Um, that I was the first openly lesbian judge. And now in Massachusetts, maybe because of my experience and Dermot's experience, it is so commonplace. Um, and I, I think that's a wonderful thing because I think that is what the goal is, that it's not gonna matter. None of it matters if we're all in a, a very um, equal society. Thank you. You're welcome. To wrap, okay. So you're gonna go like this. I'm gonna go like yeah, that. You're gonna go like that. Clap. Clap. Okay. Okay. Give me a clap. Okay. Injured a clap once.